Good evening, everybody. Welcome to tonight's Top Dog session. Hi, Scott. I know you're waiting in the wings. How are you doing, mate? How are you doing, man? I'm very well, thank you. Very, very good. I'm very excited to have you with us. It's been great since uh, we got chatting. I love uh, not only your photography, which is a good thing, um, but uh, your, your passion and your enthusiasm. And it was something that Mark also said to me uh, when he met you and said, uh, Scott is somebody we definitely want to, to get featured on the Academy. And I'm really excited to, to find out as well that you've arranged uh, for a live wedding to be filmed for us as well, that we're doing very soon. I have, yeah. You guys are going to be coming down uh, and filming me at a wedding beginning of next month. Um, it's a really, really good venue cracking couple so it'd be nice for to show people how I work so we, you can actually see me in action and how I go about getting the images rather than just obviously me talking about them tonight so it's the exciting times ahead. Excellent that's really really good news. Uh, we're going to talk about something else that you've got going on with one of our friends James Musselwhite as well but we'll we'll catch up with that a bit later. First of all though Scott I want to talk about you so before I sort of hand you the screen and we start looking at the photography and telling everybody about the tips and tricks just give us a little bit of a background in yourself mate and obviously how you got into the wedding photography and where you what you're doing and why you're doing it today? Yeah, well, I've, I've been a professional photographer since 2003. Um, I started off working in professional photo labs, uh, dipping and dunking negatives, printing wedding proofs, um, that type of thing evolved into hand printing. Um, and it was there that I met a friend of mine who had just finished contracts working on cruise ships, and he told me all sorts of stories, and I thought, yeah, I, I fancy some of that. Um, and then spent the next 18 months working on uh, ships as a professional photographer. Um, travelled the world, took, been to some amazing places, and uh, that's where it all started. The passion um, came back. Like we've all done, worked in retail, Jessops, and uh, so forth, and then um, got headhunted as a photographer. And that's pretty much how it started. And that was in 2005. Um, set the company up in 2006, and we're going strong ever since. Oh, there's me muted. Brilliant. I didn't. Well, I didn't know about the cruise ship side of things. That's another thing that you and Sam have in common, because Sam was a videographer on the cruise ship. So when you meet, oh, him, we're, yeah. we're going to have some fun, and we should. We're going to have lots of stories in a couple of weeks. Then it's going to be good fun. Uh, absolutely <laughs> brilliant. Um, before I hand you the screen, Scott, um, obviously we do want people to interact with you, so I know we've put it up on the screen, the best ways to get in touch with you. I know it's from Facebook and, and uh, Instagram are your two main uh, areas. They are. Yeah. Uh, I'll share these links with the guys via the chat panel and again with a follow-up email tomorrow. Guys, we do want you to be interactive with us uh, tonight, and any questions that you have for Scott, please pop those through the question panel. I'll feed those through to Scott where appropriate, and as always, we allow time at the end for the questions, but we do want you to interact. Scott, I'm going to hand you the screen, pal, so it's coming over. Fantastic. To you now. I'll let you know when we can see everything clearly. That's screen two. If I do that and do that. Are you seeing are you seeing the first slide? I am indeed, mate. So we can see the slide. I can hear you loud and clear. So guys, any questions for Scott, pop them through the question panel. Scott, it's all yours, pal. Thanks, mate. Well, firstly, I want to thank every one of you for, for logging on. Um, it, uh, those of you who spoke, that heard me speak before, thanks for coming back. And those that haven't, then hopefully I'm going to give you a bit of an insight to my mindset when I'm taking wedding pictures. It's something that... Wedding photography, I'm very passionate about. I, I'm a great believer in not really sticking to the rules. I'm, I'm a, if you know the rules, it's okay to break them, and that's that's my mantra when I when I take pictures. Um, at any point, if you've got any questions, and just fire at me. Again, you can save them to the end. But if something that's on the tip of your tongue you want to speak to me about, then just let Joe know, and we'll answer the question. So basically, tonight, what I'm going to be doing is I've just picked 30 pictures. Um, that I've taken over the last couple of, couple of three years that I'm very proud of and just to show you my mindset and what I'm looking for for uh, as far as the pitch is concerned so we'll get the ball rolling. Um, this is uh, taken on one of my first post-wedding shoots. Uh, I, I'm a love, love just experimenting ideas. I don't think it's very fair to try new ideas um, on a wedding day because it's a lot of pressure. So when I when I started my journey towards getting my wedding fellowship, I, I took brides out um, after the wedding day and just practiced with them, um, told them what my plan was, told them where we were going to go. I had a couple of ideas, um, and this was the first shoot that we did. We um, spent the evening, or the morning, sorry, in the London Underground. Uh, very early start, 5 o'clock in the morning, we got to Gant Hill Station and just went around the underground, just taking pictures. Uh, I did a bit of research today, you know, the week before, 
because obviously the underground's a massive network, so we didn't want to be just aimlessly wandering around the network. So I had a couple of locations, and this was probably my favourite shot. And this was one of the first shots I entered into competition, uh, SWPP in a print comp. Um, all available light. You'll probably see and notice when we start getting into the into the actual wedding work is I use just a available light. Um, very very rarely do I put a flash gun on the camera. Everything's lit with uh, reflectors. Uh, again, just sculpting light around the couple, and then again on the very odd occasion I will use. Um, I've got an ice light and I have a low ID light that I use to light the couples up for certain shots. Um, this one that you're seeing now is just natural available light. There's nothing else going on there apart from at the time the the beast that was the Nikon D3S. Um, this was about 9:30 in the morning. Uh, I wanted that kind of pose where we've got this couple just obviously had a night out on the town, just got married and returning to to the hotel. So that was the the, the walking shot and I wanted a nice landscape. Baker Street is one of the original uh, tube stations in London. So it was uh, it's actually quite pretty. Not so good in colour, but uh, black and white it does look absolutely beautiful. Obviously we photoshopped it a little bit. We've, we've darkened down the corners and stuff, but again I don't go too heavy on Photoshop. I like to keep things looking as natural um, as possible. So this was uh, this was um, an image that we took uh, two years ago, and actually won me my first SWPP globe. This uh, won the wedding classical category uh, in the 2016 print competition two three years ago. Sorry, um, again all with natural light. Uh, it's just two reflectors in uh, on off camera that you can't see. One throwing light into the back of the groom, and one throwing light into the bottom of the dress. You can probably tell at the bottom it's just where the, the direction of light was coming from the, the window. This shot was actually uh, I had. I had uh, not a row, but a, a discussion with the DJ. He wanted to set um, up in the morning uh, in this location. I said, "No, no, no, no! You can't, you can't do that. I need to get this. I have a shot in mind." And I kind of made him set off to one side as long as I helped him move his DJ decks into the into the alcove once I'd finished. But this was a, a very proud moment. Uh, I'm not great in Photoshop, but I did everything here myself. I, I straightened it all up. I, you know, Darken down the windows and everything, and, and just very proud of this shot. It still hangs up at the studio today. Um, again, is the posing for me is quite natural. I'm I'm not a believer of doing things on a wedding day that that you wouldn't do as a couple naturally. Um, this is probably as much shape as I'll put into a bride and groom. The, the, the shots where couples are being bent over and arms out everywhere. That, that personally, it, it works for some people, but it just doesn't work for me. I, I like to keep things looking very, very natural. Um, the first two color of shots were uh, in color, but I just felt for competition, this worked really, really well in black and white. This is actually where I got married. Um, it's a little venue in Essex, um, and this was uh, taken about a month before we got married. And I was actually testing out a shot that I wanted our photographers to take. Uh, I was being really good. I was very well behaved the day of our wedding, um, and this was the only shot that I said to the guys that I really want this kind of shot. Um, I like space. I like leading lines, and I just like the images to breathe, which is actually not how I was trained as a photographer on the ships. We were always told um, to shoot quite tight uh, and shoot to print because we were shooting on film, and we just didn't have the time to. Uh, be cropping in uh, the turnaround for getting the prints back into the gallery was you know, sometimes hours and we're taking a thousand pictures in the dining room and there just wasn't time to do it. So this is a kind of a, a complete 360 to or 180 sorry to how it was shot initially. Lit with a low light daylight, uh, the top right hand side we did photoshop out my assistant uh, and so it gives the impression that they're being lit by the chandelier. In fact, off just off to the right, they're being lit by a low ID, which is um, a very, very cool bit of kit that I keep in the bag at all times and fully charged because you never know when you're going to need it. I don't, I don't use off-camera flash. I like to see the light that I'm going to be using before I take the picture, uh, and with a nice light, and certainly with the low ID, it works for me. That way, I can see exactly what I'm going to do, and I will then construct the pose with the light that I've got, and then using the location, and then put the idea into what my 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 thought process, and that's how we go about getting images like this. It's just I wanted her, the bride. You can probably see her her face. I wanted her to be happy. They've just got married. 
again, I want to try and capture emotion um, in the prints I'm uh, in the images that I'm that I'm taking. This was a shoot uh, down in Cornwall. Uh, again, nothing else going on here apart from available light. Uh, again, no off camera flash. This is just well, it's not off camera, but it, it, it's it's taken this way, and with just a little bit of tweaking, lay masking. Um, and just the use of light. I wanted quite a powerful pose for for her. We've got the sea and the sky quite dramatic. I thought a soft pose here really, really wouldn't work. Um, so I just really wanted to try and keep everything in context. I love this image. It's just something that she's got on the wall now. I entered it into print comp uh, the year I took it. It did okay. Didn't it merited at SWPP, but didn't go much further than that. But she has it on the wall, which for me that that's more than any award that's ever gonna that's ever gonna come my way. If I can please the client, then I'm happy. Awards are great, but awards don't pay the bills sometimes. So you have to kind of make sure you're photographing for your client first, and then and then awards will come. Uh, at a later date. So how I use Construct Light differently, the next slide I'm going to show you is, so I'm standing for the next shot where where the bride is there and I've swapped around a little bit and we did this pose, so the same light, same um, location, so the previous shot I was standing where she was and, and vice versa. So again we've gone for a very, very powerful pose to suit the dramatic clouds above her and the rocks. Shape is everything for my wedding pictures. Um, you know, get the feet position right, then everything else will follow. I, it frustrates me as a print judge when I'm judging um, for the BIPP and SWPP, where you've got an amazing dress, amazing location, and the and the brides and grooms are just too flat footed. You need to create shape, and just by getting the feet right, the hips and the body. It's like the old the old song you taught as a kid: the hip bones connected to the leg bone, and vice versa. You get the feet right, and everything else will fall into place. She was a dancer, so she could hold her pose very, very well. And I do appreciate that a lot of the brides that us wedding photographers uh, have to deal with aren't models or dancers. They work in shops and offices, and I'm not used to doing this type of thing. But the way that I sell my weddings now is that I, I inlay confidence in the couple that they're going to get some amazing shots as long as they trust me. Uh, trust is a big thing. If they trust me, they'll pretty much do anything I want. Uh, within reason, I'm known for doing crazy things on, on wedding days. And I'm a great believer of because it's a wedding day, we can't do this because it's a wedding day. Why can't we do something? Let's just do it and it will look absolutely fantastic. A bit like this shot here, really. I mean, this was a, a beautiful location in Essex. Um, and this is in the car park. It's an old, I don't even know what it is. It's just an old shed or something. And I've driven past it on many occasions photographing at the venue. Um, and I just kind of thought that would actually look really quite cool. This was taken uh, the year I was photographing for my fellowship. Uh, it almost made the panel, uh, but it didn't. In the end, there were stronger shots that were used. Um, and I had to go in there and trample down all the um, all the weeds and the brambles and the stinging nettles. And I said to her, I said, well, can I stand in there? And she said, really? I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's going to look really, really cool. You're going to have to trust me. And again, this, this, was in the, uh, this made the album. Uh, black and white again. I could have kept it in in colour to use all of the um, the colours of the trees. This was taken in June, so very vibrant colours uh, on the trees. But I just felt the the colour was detracting from the bride a little bit too much, which is why I chose it in black and white. And again, with natural light, there's no reflectors here whatsoever. This is pretty much off camera, uh, with just a little tweak in uh, in Photoshop to get everything um, in sepia. You get the detail in the dress and. Everything, everything about it. A smiley, a smiley expression here probably wouldn't work as well uh, as the expression that she's um, that she's got. This was a cool print. This was uh, this uh, this bride, she's her bride's father's house where she got ready, and uh, it was a very, very hot and sticky day in August. And uh, I was complaining, uh, not complaining, but saying, "Oh, it's so hot. I wish there was a." A, chip, a big fridge we can walk into, and she said, well, you have to go downstairs to the wine cellar. I said, wine cellar? What? You have to show me that. And then um, she took me down there before she got that dress. I saw the location. I thought, we have to come back in here and photograph the bride. Um, obviously, we did, we did, I do photograph normal bride portraiture, um, and then I, I'm a great believer in uh, trying to do wedding photography. It's like trying to feed my three-year-old. You have to have your peas and your carrots before you have your eating mess, and um, so this is the eating mess for me. This I did the, the standard bridal portraiture with her upstairs, window with the flowers, 
and we went downstairs into the wine cellar and um, and and cracked this off. This was lit with a, a, a low ID. It's very 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 dark down there. Uh, even with the Nikon I was using at the time, we weren't going to get any detail um, in the eyes or the dress without any with some uh, additional light source. So we did have the groom, um, not the groom, sorry, the uh, the father of the bride, hold the light just above my head just to give some catch lights and light the eyes up a little bit. But one of my favourite bridal portraits that I've sort of taken in the last couple of years, I absolutely love it. This was a shot that we took um, very, very late in the day, very late in the day indeed. I actually was requested to do this shot on the wedding day itself and I uh, forgot, um, forgot to do it. I did the first dance, uh, said my goodbyes, packed up um, and then about to get in the car and I saw one of the ushers come out and I said, oh, no, take care mate, see you later wrong kind of thing. I said, yeah. He said, oh yeah, I've got my cigars. I've gone, ah, oh, the cigar shot. So literally, I grabbed my camera, followed him through, I had an 85 mil lens on, uh, didn't have any chance, time to, to do it and I wanted the kind of this, this ambient light, I didn't want any light source, I literally just wanted the light from the, uh, from the light just to light everything else up, everything else was just basically off camera. Um, it's really cool, I, I really wish everyone was looking down and just the groom in the jacket was looking at me but we tried it three or four times and I just wanted to smoke their cigar so Again, what I found in working for my fellowship and, uh, and awards that sometimes it's not about what I want. It's uh, you, you have to photograph for the bride and groom, and anything else that we try and do um, is a bonus in that respect. So this was—I I would have had loved to have more time, um, but unfortunately, they wanted to smoke their cigars and uh, have a drink, and why not? It was a lovely day in September, so I earned that. Anybody got any questions so far, Jay? Or we? Yeah, uh, we could... I, was, I was just going to chip in, uh, Scott. Um... A couple of times you referred to, I know you referred to the ice light. What's the other light that you refer, you've referred to twice? As you say, a long. Uh, it's a low, L-O-W-E-L. -E I bought it. That's what, um, I thought, that's what I thought you said, but I wanted yeah, to. I bought it years ago, and it, there's actually probably way better lights than, than that now from from the same company, but it still works. I mean, the uh, the plug's a bit broken, but you know, nothing gaffer tape can't fix, and uh when it actually dies, I'll buy a new one. But yeah, the low ID light, like, it's absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Brilliant. Thank you, mate. Um, yeah, most of the other questions, we, we've got the generic ones that I'll hang on to at the moment. The, uh, well, 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 actually, one more before I remember, the, the shed one, the, the, the bride one, where you, you said it was, that was at the venue that you were photographing at, you said, wasn't it? It was, yeah. It was, it's, uh, it was you know, a bit of a walk from the, the main venue itself, but it was something, a location that I, I had my eye on for a while and thought, well, if the bride's up for it, I'll ask her if she wants to go for a stroll. She was up for it and we went. And so, yeah, I always always asking questions and saying, no, do you fancy doing something a bit crazy today? So one of the questions that came up with regards to that is also, I know that was on obviously on the venue property, obviously, if it's if it's private property, then you obviously got to check first, I would imagine. Oh, yeah, always. But then uh, I'm a great believer in asking for forgiveness rather than permission. So <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'll always, you know, chance my arm um, and, and try, if you get, you know, I'm terribly sorry, sir, you've got the shots in the bag, you can make your way, but um, yeah, generally it's something like that. If it's on private property, I will always try and ask first. But you know, I'm a I'm a risk taker, so <laughs> that's just that's just the way my brain works. <laughs> and and just to get before we let you crack on the so the lower light that's a, that's a video light, right? Is it is it? It is, yeah. So basically, it's, it comes out in tungsten. So um, I generally I keep my my camera in uh, in uh, cloud white balance, but when I'm using the lower white daylight. I will uh, change it to tungsten so I can see what I'm getting and just what I just uh, cool it down a little bit. But you'll see another shot in, in, later on that I kept it in um, in tungsten. It, it, the skies can go an amazing blue colour if you just play around with the white balance on the lower. It's an incredible, incredible bit of kit. Yeah, I think uh, Gary, Gary and Sue Williams also who, who shot for us and what, you know one of our other uh, wedding masters. They're, they're I think that's what they use as well, uh, and they yeah. swear they swear by too. All right, Palace, all back to you, mate. Cheers, man. Awesome stuff, no worries at all. Uh, this is probably my favourite groom shot that I've ever taken. Um, this was, I don't know if you know, anyone knows London. This is the Gherkin. Um, I don't know what it's actually called, but it's referred to as the Gherkin in London. Um, they got married at a hotel just down the road. Um, this was one of the locations where 
we took the shot and were very quickly asked to leave because the, uh, the city of London, obviously, we're unfortunately today's uh, today's times are very very tight and tight on security. Um, and when they see a couple of photographers and bride and the groom and no permission slips, they tend to get the ump. So we uh, literally got this shot and uh, and disappeared. Lit, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, lit. You can see on the groom's left side, the sun is actually poking through. Um, and then we lit the uh, left side of his face, or the left side, his right side of his face, with a reflector, just to lift up the shadows a little bit on there. Um, again, if I was going back to do this shot once more, I would open his legs up a little bit more to simulate the uh, the triangle he's standing in. Um, but hindsight's a wonderful thing. Uh, this shot came second the year after I won this WPP Classical Wedding. This shot came second the year after, so I was a bit gutted not to um, not to have won it two years in a row. And the reason it came second because of the highlights on the left side of his face were a little bit too strong. So um, yeah, but you know what? Every day's a learning day. So. Um, that's uh, that's that's that. This was another one of my post wedding shoots that we did. Uh, shot the, the the wedding down in in Sussex. Uh, this location was on my radar on the wedding day, and it was just a little bit too far to get out. Um, so we arranged for bride and groom to get dressed up again and go down here and photograph it. Uh, very very cool location. I've seen it on a couple of TV documentaries, which is why I always had it on my radar. My love of architecture, photography, this ticks all my boxes. Um, Joe was a brilliant, brilliant bride. This was actually part of the wedding album of the year in the MPA, uh, the last time they ran the competition. So the whole the whole wedding was a complete success, and we actually featured a couple of photos from this this uh, this shoot here. I just love it. It's just my one of my favourite bridal portraits I've ever taken. It's just just yeah. I, I, I can't I talk about this image for the whole the whole hour. I'm afraid, but I'm gonna I'm gonna move on. Otherwise, I'm gonna bore you. Uh, a little bit of Photoshop work just to get rid of some of the the, the, uh, the brickwork, but I wanted to keep it quite raw. I didn't want to clean it up too much because you take away from what it actually is. Um, it's just it's just a stunning stunning place to, to photograph. I can thoroughly recommend going down there and doing it. Another location uh, in the centre of London by St Paul's Cathedral that we were asked to move on quite quickly. This is around the corner from the First Dates um, restaurant. I don't know if you guys in London know that in. Uh, down near where the um, St Paul's uh, Square is. Uh, great location, um, great light, again nice shape in the bride. I've just lent her off a little bit to the left just to create a bit of shape, got her right foot crossed over just to give the impression that the brides need to be leaning here to create shape. Uh, again, hands off the body, soft expression, lovely expression, nice lighting. Um, it's, again, it's a great picture that I'm very proud to have taken. It's, um, I just love it. I just love the location. And we had to run quite quickly after this because there were security guards that were on walkie talkies and we had to let it quite quick. But uh, we were quite fast and shed flat shoes on. So that was, uh, it was pretty good. This is a venue. Uh, the next three slides are the same location. And this is the benefit of knowing the venues well. Uh, this was um, a wedding taken last April. Um, this is obviously I think, Ivy. Uh, brilliant. To photograph all throughout the year, and right now it's like this, and you've got slight, obviously with the weather we're having at the minute, the the ivy leaves are starting to come out. But I wanted to to suit the pose to the location we were in. Again, just in camera, no external lights, no reflectors. I just wanted her that to look down at the at the bouquet, cover the veil across her face, and create this kind of ethereal look around uh, around the bride with quite a moody backdrop. Um, a, a smiley, happy pose here wouldn't have worked. So we needed to, the, again the pose to suit the location, the light, and the post and the post processing to shoot every, to suit everything that we're doing. Then I came back in August and shot that exactly the same location. Uh, the ivy is obviously in full bloom, but again we've suit, we've changed the pose. We've brought the bright, the groom in. I mean, some people say that the groom's just an accessory on the wedding day. I, I don't believe that. It's as much his day as it is the bride's and it should be involved as much as possible. Um, I actually, believe it or not, prefer photographing grooms. I do the brides. So I, get my, I think my results are much more consistent with grooms than any other brides. Um, I, I do enjoy photographing the brides still, but uh, I much prefer doing doing the guys and their prep in the morning. So I've just got him to come in behind, uh, whispered something uh, to him to say into her ear, to create that reaction. He's in next to that. Crack the exposure off, and, and we've got the we've got the uh, the frame in the same uh, the same place as we were. Went back in October and caught that. So again, just 
you know, knowing the venue, knowing the location, and knowing what the what the the conditions are going to do, it, you know, you can go to the same spot three different times and take three different pictures. And so, just because people might be photographing in the same venue week in week out, does not mean you have to do the same stuff. You can go back and find different avenues and different ways of photographing, test yourself, test your ability, and really try and push your, your boundaries. I mean, I, I shot at this particular wedding venue three days in a row over the summer, uh, August bank holiday, and I came back with different images and every single wedding because I didn't want to get complacent. I didn't want to go through and, you know, it's not fair to the bride on the Sunday if I'm photographing the same images I'm doing on the Friday. So I try and keep it fresh and try and keep it, um, try and keep it real. What I'm saying, what I was saying earlier about about shape, uh, this is this was uh, posed and directed by by me. This was after the speeches, just before the first dance back in September. Um, I could have just got the, the the guys and brides to stand there and just be quite flat footed, but for the silhouette, I wanted to create the shape. The girl on the right again, I've just told her to put all of her weight on her right foot and shift her weight to the left hand side. And the other two brides managed to cross their feet and just again put their weight on their stack on the supporting foot just to create a little bit more shape um, in from there. And again, the bride, she's standing her shoulder again from a judge's point of view, her shoulder's probably a little bit too high, but I've got her to point her left toe. So again, the back will just naturally drop back a little bit, just creating that gorgeous line from her shoulder right down to the point of her toe. Um, Again, off camera, a little bit of enhancement in uh, silver, uh, silver effects, <laughs> color effects, um, Nick software that I use a lot. If I do any post production, it's generally in Nick software. I don't use Topaz or any of the HDR filters like that. It's generally all done in Nick. Um, and uh, great believer in lamb masking and just trying to don't just hit the play button on Nick software and go, yep, that will do. Lamb mask it, bring certain bits of detail out, draw some back, and make the image kind of really, really work for you. One of my favourite bridal portraits, uh, uh, bridal party shots. And this is what we were saying earlier about, you know, you've got to do the standard shots first, and then you do something like this. I mean, obviously, this this did make the album at the end of it, uh, but I know the parents when they chose their wedding album didn't have this picture, and they wanted the more traditional formal shot, you know, head and shoulders, bouquets, and everyone looking like the, you know, the traditional wedding picture. Uh, but this is what's on the bride and groom's wall again. This is something for them, something for me. Um, I like to challenge myself on the wedding day and get a bridal pool, you know, trying to get a group shot, it's a bit different. My use of location, um, this was uh, a location that we shot down in central London back in September. Uh, the groom was being particularly testing. Um, uh, yeah, I, <laughs> he was uh, not playing ball, he was uh, particularly looking forward to getting uh, a drink inside him. And, uh, but he, he booked me to get these wow shots and he was doing everything but trying to let me do wow shots and uh, I kind of lost my call a little bit and said okay I'm just going to leave you to it and when you're ready for pictures we'll come and we'll, we'll go back upstairs and get some pictures. So this is that round by the lift um, and he stood just behind me um, and I turned around and saw this light and said, uh, and, and said just what's that on the floor down there? He dropped his head and we got that um, and that's from that location, and that was the one bar portrait, the groom portrait that we used in the album. And, uh, and so, even though he didn't think he was being photographed, I just turned around, one click exposure, bang, and we got it. And uh, that's the one he was. I can't believe he got that photograph for me. It's incredible. I said, well, only one chance, and all, all we need as photographers is one chance just to get this amazing, you know, light. And it's, it just, it was probably luck, blind luck that he stood there. And in fact, I just turned around to just say, I'll see you upstairs in a minute, and saw him and. It was just luck, yeah, I'm not going to lie. This is the raw picture that came off the camera uh, that we took in April. Uh, and I'll show you the edited version uh, of it that went into competition in, in, uh, in September. Cropping for me is, is vital. Um, everyone kind of keeps to this you know, two, uh, three to two ratio uh, landscape and, uh, and upright, but for me, I do enjoy shooting film still. My latest fellowship was on uh, taken entirely on film. So I'm a big fan of the square crop um, and a little bit of layer masking, a little bit of Nick, um, a little bit of Nick software, uh, a little bit of dodging and burning, and this is the file that went into competition. It's had a massive difference off the same file, just a bit of a crop difference lift the face, brought out the clouds, a little bit of, of work, um, bringing the dress out and the veil out and, and for me that's again one of my most favourite pictures that we took um, on, the, on, on the wedding day and it's just 
the bride standing under a tree on top of a ditch. Uh, I, she looked at me and said, you want me to get up on there? I'm like, yes, please. We're going to get a really, really cool shot. Um, and this is the proof in the pudding. This is actually the front cover of my latest brochure uh, that goes out to all my, all my clients that come in and see me at the, the trade shows and come in and book. This is the front cover. Oh, I have to go back one. I'll go back one. I've gone too far. Ah, Jay, help. I've gone too far. <laughs> Hang on to close this down. Uh, let me go back. While, while you're sorting out, um, yeah, I'm going to just jump in. Um, there was a couple of questions when we were looking at the silhouette, uh, and, and, and the feedback is loving it. Uh, but a few comments come in, obviously, you chose to crop sort of quite high up on the leg. Would you, yep. have, would you have shot and then done the crop afterwards, or is that just your style? Still loving it. But is that is that you, or would you have shot the full length to start with and then done? The um, to be honest, I, I cut I cropped at the ankles because the grass where they were standing was a little bit long, um, and I wanted that clean break. So my, I made the, it, to cut it at the knees, which is what I would probably would have liked to have done. Um, it didn't give me enough space. It, it, it just didn't work uh, in pose, which is why I made the decision to kind of crop it down. The original file is you do get the grass at the bottom, but I didn't want to detract from. Uh, the silhouette, so I just thought oh, I'll make the make the decision and cut it off at the ankles, um, and that's why I made that made that call. Well, that's the only one I wanted to chip in with for the minute, mate. Well, before, that's cool. Before I forgot. <laughs> before you forget, <laughs> yeah. uh, the shot on here now again is from a, a post a post spreadsheet that we did um, back in October. This was uh, the bride was a was a horsey bride, uh, stables on her mum's house, and this was her horse and. The horse was a bit scattish on the wedding day, and she really wanted a picture on the wedding day of um, of, of her and her horse, but it just wasn't wasn't playing ball. There was too many people, um, and it was just it was too erratic. So we, we made the decision to come back and shoot it at a later date. I envisaged this shot. I, I didn't quite know what I wanted to get when I when I took the shutter, uh, but when I took the when I had the, she told me that she wanted a photograph. I thought let's try and get something a little bit different, and then. then Again, my love of landscapes and architecture, negative space, and it was again blind luck that we got the the, the detail and the clouds that we did. Um, and I just wanted a shot. I said, right, just take it for a stroll, just go for a, just go for a walk. Um, and got this. We went like, round and round three or four times to get the kind of the perfect the pose. You can't pose a horse, but the perfect uh, um, feet on the horse. And you know, I, I got got uh, the bride to talk to the horse so its ears are facing forward, very important you're doing horse photography to get the ears facing forwards, it's, uh, again, it's when you're doing a silhouette like this. Um, again, this is on the wall, it's, they bought this, this is, in a, this is on the print, Loxie did it for me, um, and this is a, a, a print on their, on their wall, that's just okay, probably one of my favourite post wedding shoots that I've, uh, that I've done. Oh, let's go to the next one, here we go. Uh, again, another post wed. This is uh, the Bank of England in the, the centre of London, Exchange Square. Very, very early on a very cold November uh, morning. Again, uh, this bride actually booked me to have a post wedding shoot. She wanted me to photograph a wedding, but she saw what I did on the underground and booked me specifically to come and do one of these after her after a wedding day. She wanted some some wow kind of shots. And again, I know London quite well, so I, I never try and go to the same spot twice. And Exchange Square is one of my favourites. The architecture there is beautiful. Um, it, and this was um, literally standing on the wall of the Bank of England on a Sunday. And those of you who don't have the City of London, it's very, very quiet at the weekends. No one, no one works up there. And you can pretty much do what you want, which is good for me. Which means I, can, I can climb buildings and uh, jump up on places that you probably wouldn't get away with on a weekday. Um, again, no external, no external lights there at all, just literally off camera. We have cleaned up the wall, um, we have taken off a fire hydrant there as well, and just generally made it look a little bit cleaner. Um, again, you can see her left knee pushing across, creating that beautiful shape in the wedding dress. The dress itself was just was covered in thousands and thousands of sequins. It's absolutely a dream to photograph, and Eilish, the bride there, was just an absolute dream to work with, and she was, again, up for any suggestions that I had on the, on the, on the wedding day. To go into something a bit different, I'm trying to bring movement into my wedding pictures now. Um, this is handheld. This is I'm um, using Fuji systems now, so you can get away with incredibly slow shutter speeds handheld. Um, and this was about an eighth of a second um, down in Bath back in uh, beginning of December. 
and I wanted to get her foot exactly pin sharp, and we didn't quite get it exactly in the middle, but I wanted her foot to be exactly sharp. Um, again, this probably took three or four goes of, of getting it right um, to get the right amount of blur um, on on the bride here. Again, a little bit of tidying up. There was some uh, rather choice words graffitied into the stonework behind her, which we didn't really want to enter into composition, so we did edit that out a little bit. Um, but again, it's just something I like to create movement. Um, I tried it in my fellowship panel, and I'm, I'm bringing it back, uh, bringing it back for 2017 to bring some uh, depth and movement into my uh, into my images. This image uh, came third in SWPP print comp this year, uh, taken back in October. And again, another reason why I love doing groom portraiture. This is all about me at the minute, negative space, natural light, using the elements, cropping. Obviously, this was a, this was a, a, two, a three to two crop that we, um, we we brought in a little bit more to kind of round it, round it off and um, Photoshop. Um, light editing, I don't go too crazy, but we do layer masking, dulled the hand down, the, uh, brought down the, the cushions and got rid of some plugs underneath the, um, underneath the sofa, but pretty much a location like that. Again, strong pose, good looking groom. You know, he photographed really, really well. He was uh, he was a dream to, to, to work with. Um, it actually worked better with uh, this venue I work at quite a lot. And um, the, the painting behind used to sit directly above where the where the chair is. And I'm really pleased that the uh, they moved it because it actually brings balance to the picture more. Um, it's just again one of my favourite groom shots that I think I've taken in the last in the last few years. I'm all about the quirk. This was uh, taken at this the same bride with the movement, and this was uh, one of the times where we had to ask for forgiveness um, and permission because this couple had booked an amazing hotel uh, and restaurant down near Bath, but they only had booked one room. And I saw this um, uh, deer, and I saw the paintings. I thought I have to photograph here, so we snuck out and um, we uh, we did this shot and literally took three exposures before the man has jumped on us and said you can't do that you have to go back in here so I'm very very sorry terribly sorry it won't happen again and I'm thinking please man please be sharp um, thankfully it was um, and we just a little bit of layer masking just to dull down the paintings bring out the uh, the, uh, the the hair to bring out the bride and groom I didn't want a smiley expression I wanted the, the couple to mask the expression on the deer um, and it, I love it. It didn't merit at SWPP. I was really surprised. I thought it might merit for the quirkiness, but it didn't. Uh, but I love it. Uh, it's one of my favourite couple shots I took last year. It's, uh, it's a, it was amazing. This was uh, in the open slide. This was a destination wedding that we took down in uh, in Amalfi, Italy, back in June. Very nice day down in June. Uh, it was just the three of us, the bridegroom and myself. So I was actually a witness to the wedding. I had to sign the certificate. It was uh, it was brilliant, absolutely fantastic. This was the last shot we took on the day. It was like a post wedding shoot, but it was the actual wedding day. It was an absolute pleasure to photograph them around Italy. Um, I had to speak in very very broken German to a lovely lady that was doing laps up and down the the, uh, the swimming pool here, and I had to say to her, with respect, can you just stop for a minute because you're creating too many ripples in the uh, in, in the water. I didn't want a perfect reflection. I wanted the reflection to be real, so I wasn't too bothered about the fact that we got some movement in the um, in the water. And again, just created, sculpted the pose, got very very low down. Um, this was taken on a, a Zeiss 12 mil lens on the Fuji, so I'm literally the lens hood was in the water to create the the, the look to get the sky um, above it, and just a little bit of the horizon. You probably see on the left hand side some of the mountains of Sorrento down there as well. It's a beautiful, it prints beautifully. Um, it, I've got it here in, in one of my sample albums. It's just a beautiful, beautiful picture on my on my. From the same wedding, again, you can show you two different pictures from the same location. Uh, quite a powerful shot of the groom. Got him sitting down. I tried to move the stone thing he was on. It weighed about five tons, so I chose to leave it where it was and got to sit on it. Um, ideally, I wouldn't shoot the groom this low uh, for obvious reasons. So we, um, I got quite low to the ground as well and used the hands to cover up uh, anything we didn't want to see. Um, again, quite a powerful pose. Sepia tone worked really well for him. His suit matches the background, and it worked absolutely fantastic. Um, it was just a, a pleasure. This was on a 90 mil lens. Uh, I'm quite a way back, and I shoot wide open as much as possible. And you've got a tiny bit of drop off on the um, 
on the uh, on the background there, and then we brought the bride in and the same spot and photographed that. Again, quite a soft pose, same location. Turn her body into the light again, creating beautiful shape and shadow down across the uh, the dress to bring out all the detail. And again, a soft pose. The left leg is pointing out. Drop the right shoulder and just place the hands. It's the it's, you know, hand placement for me is a big a big thing. Hands need to be doing something. This is uh, another shot from the destination wedding. This this was uh, in the church just up the road from where they got married, overlooking uh, the, um, the the bay in Ravello. Uh, walked past here, and I had to I had to photograph her in front of it again. I've put the veil across her face to create this ethereal look. Uh, symmetry for me is a big big yes. I love symmetrical images. I'm all about negative space. I'm all about just. It, Symmetry is, is perfect for me, so this all it was this ticked all my boxes. Again, we had to kind of remove some graffiti from the uh, the panels, but I didn't want to. Again, I didn't like the uh, the brickwork. I didn't want to tidy it up too much. I didn't want to um, make it too clean. I wanted it to be quite raw and quite rustic. She was very hot underneath here. It was a baking hot day, and uh, she did really really well. We stood we were there for about five minutes photographing her, and we took the van off, and she was she was quite hot. So we went for an apparel spritz after this, and for a job well done. This next set of images uh, were taken as well, three more to go. Um, I was I was very fortunate to be taken out to the States last year and photographed in America. Um, I met the bride a couple of years back in a wedding here in Essex, and we got chatting about baseball. Uh, we both support the same baseball team, and we got uh, got chatting. And she said to me, "If ever I get married, I'm going to have you come over and do it." I'm like, "All right, yeah, okay, that's never going to happen." So September last, she emailed me and said, so we're getting married, do you fancy it? I've gone, yep, yep, what's the crack? And she said, well, uh, my husband-to-be is a, a park ranger in uh, Baxter State Park in Maine, and we're going to be getting married on top of a mountain. Are you up for it? I've gone, hell yes. So literally, I trained for a year. Uh, I lost nearly two stone in weight um, to get up and down, and... and uh, this was one of my favourite shots that we took from the top. This was about 4,700 feet up. Uh, the bride, it was seven of us that went up. Um, again, no scouting locations whatsoever. This was just literally get to the top and right, how are we going to photograph this then? Um, but using the experience that I've got, using light and no, just, and we just, we, we just smashed it. It was absolutely, the weather was perfect, not a breath of wind. So with seven of us hyped up, um, the bride, Morgan, bless her, she got changed at the top. She packed her wedding dress in her backpack. Um, and again, Mike, the groom, he packed his waistcoat and tie and shirt, and we all got changed at the top. Uh, and they got married, because in the States, you can get married pretty much anywhere um, you want. As long as the, the celebrant is, has been registered and legal, you can do it in your mum's back garden. So they chose to get married on the top of a mountain. So um, it was just the most amazing experience. I had three, we had three days um, hiking to get up to the top and down again, and it was the most incredible experience I've ever had. Um, the, the best wedding I've, I've probably ever photographed, and nothing's going to top this ever. I don't think it was just absolutely breathtaking. Um, this was another shot that we took from the top. Again, I'm known for doing something crazy in wedding days, and I said, just go and sit on that rock down there, and they want that one. I'm like, yeah, we're going to make something work really, really well. And this, bear in mind how high up we are, um, I'm teetering on a couple of rocks myself. Uh, no ropes, we're just kind of using gravity and very good hiking boots to keep us uh, to keep us from falling down. But uh, I wanted to get as much of the landscaping as possible. Uh, obviously, you know, the beautiful day, and Baxter State Park is like a thousand acres, it's probably even more. Um, it's the most beautiful part of the most beautiful part of America. Um, not today, I've got about four feet of snow coming down, but uh, it's just incredible to have the experience to photograph and just let the image breathe. And the, the, they, they got married on top of a mountain for a reason. They love the state they live in. So let's, let's show it off and let's show how beautiful the state is. And as I said before, before we go on to the last slide and before we take any questions, I'm a great believer in let's do it. You're only going to get married once. If you've got if you've got a photograph in mind that you really want to do, ask the question. They're only going to say no. When Morgan booked me, she said we really really want a picture of a sunset, and the sun sets just to the left of where of where the mountain is. So I'm like, yeah, we can do that. So we went down to the pontoon, um, 
and do a couple of shots and I'm like, it's not working. And I saw some canoes. So I said to her, well, the story was, sorry, going back, they got married on the mountain on the Thursday, we came back down, um, we had a party on the Wednesday, on the Friday night, sorry, and on the Saturday, all their friends and family came and they got married in front of their friends and family. So this was on the, 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 the wedding day of the Saturday. So she did, she's in her proper wedding dress. We're not This dress she didn't really care about, but the, the next picture I'll show you, she was in the dress that she loved and fell in love with and wanted to get married in. Um, which every bride does, but then just because they fall in love with it, let, let's photograph it, let's celebrate you looking awesome in this wedding dress, and let's do something really, really crazy. So I said, do you want to do you want to get in a canoe and go out on the lake? And they've gone, well, in a wedding dress? I went, yeah. She said, well, why not? Let's do it. So we, um, we took that at sunset. So that's the bride and groom um, paddling in a canoe, in her precious wedding dress with a mountain that we climbed behind them at sunset and this is the last spread in their um, in their wedding album. Obviously I've, I've lifted up the sky a little bit here um, but if you've got an idea my advice is ask the question. They're only going to say no and you never know they might say yes and you might get something really really awesome. Um, just because it's a wedding day you shouldn't restrict you from doing whatever it is that you want. It's just if you've got an idea run with it. That's my big, big advice. I, I am known for doing some really crazy stuff, like climbing up a bloody mountain. Um, but it, it's you know, without those experiences, you're only going to develop. You're only going to get better as a photographer, and you're going to add more strings to your bow. Your portfolio is going to get better. You're going to get more people talking about you and your work, and you're going to get more bookings, and you're going to get more. You know, and with that, you're going to get more success. Um, so if you've got an idea, you've got something crazy, obviously if it was thrown down a rain and it was really, really muddy, then obviously there are limits, I'll say that we're not going to do it, but if, it's, if the weather's right and you've got a good feeling about the couple and they trust you, ask the question and fire away. And that's pretty much it. Um, it's it's you know, been a real pleasure to talk to you about my favourite images for the last couple of years. Um, I'm really happy to take any questions that you've um, that you've got for me. Mate, there's loads of questions, but I knew have I now have a new favourite wedding photographer. That was just, <laughs> yeah, absolutely amazing. I mean, I, this is not this is this is God's honest truth, guys. We came back from the SWPP in London. Uh, Mark met Scott, and uh, Mark came back and said to me and Sam, "We need to get Scott on the Photographer Academy." Uh, and I think Sam was the first point of contact for you. Um, and he said, uh, he said, Jay's up for it. And then I spoke to you and hadn't I only seen a handful of images, had a look at your website, uh, but I just fell in love with your enthusiasm. And that's what Mark had come back with as well. He said, I just love his attitude, love his work. Um, you know, really, really like it. And then when you sent over the, the PowerPoint today for me to have like a cheeky little behind the scenes, mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? I'm looking forward to tonight. I'm looking forward to the studio. <laughs> so uh, really, really impressive, mate. Loads of already loads of feedback. Thanking you, uh, for sharing uh, your stories and your images, um, so they're l loving that. So uh, I do have, I do have a load of questions for you, mate. They're not in any particular order. That's fine. Yeah, crack um, on. Um, I knew we we would get them, and I don't think we've. Had, I know you touched on it a little bit, but we had the usual ones. So uh, just remind us uh, the kit that you favour and sort of your go-to lenses, mate. Yeah, I mean, I'm currently on the Fuji X Pro twos. Um, I, I this is a funny story. I upgraded my Nikon equipment uh, last January to D4s's. And then when I booked the mountain wedding, I thought well, I'm not going to be able to lug those lot up the top of a freaking mountain. So literally, I my plan initially was to hire Fuji cameras because they're smaller and lighter. Um, I hired them for three weeks, and then I sold my Nikon gear and used the Fuji. So I'm on X Pro twos, and I use a, have a, a list of prime lenses that I use. And my favourites are probably my 56 1.2. Is my go-to portrait lens, uh, and also my Zeiss 12. I love wide, wide images. Um, so my Zeiss 12 mil 2.8 is probably they're, they're the two that are on the cameras the most. Uh, the other question that came in with that, obviously, we're seeing a lot of um, uh, again what I love about it, but the, you know the big, the big panoramics and the negative space that you know you refer to quite a lot tonight. Um, yeah. Typically, though, hand holding or are you using any kind of tripod system at all? No, completely handheld. The only time I use a tripod. Um, or a, a, a monopod is during the speeches. If I'm a particularly dark venue, I will um, throw a monopod on just to give, give me a bit more stability in, uh, in the image taking. But pretty much all handheld. 
Uh, brilliant. This this one came in early, and I did pur purposely keep it to the end. So we've got a few here about uh, not so much about photography, but obviously working as a wedding photographer. Um, yeah. So so the question was, uh, hi Scott, I suffer quite bad with pre-wedding nerves. I've just done my tenth wedding, and I feel like I've just forgot everything. I've got experience as a second shooter. Any ideas for how I get over my nerves and relax and enjoy it, and not being a headless chicken? Alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, no, uh, it, it will come. I mean, I still get nervous, believe it or not, especially with the uh, of the mountain wedding. There was so much pressure on me not to muck it up. I was the most nervous I have ever been for a shoot in years. Uh, so the nerves will go, um, but because you're nervous, it means you care, it means you're passionate. So I would use those nerves to your advantage and use them to create these wonderful pictures that this couple have booked you for. They've seen you work. They, they love it, which is why they booked you, and just enjoy it, and just use the nerves to keep it up, to keep you on edge that little bit more, and eventually they will subside and you end up enjoying it even more than what you really are. Brilliant. Um, any top tips? What what gets cust what gets your, your your clients at ease? Any any tips? Um, one liners. I I don't shut up when I take pictures. I'm literally in their ear the whole time. I'm just trying to keep them relaxed. And if you're going to keep them people relaxed, they're going to open up. They're going to drop this guard. As, as I mentioned in, in, the, in the keynote, a lot of the people that we photograph work in offices. They work in shops. They're not professional models. So having a stranger, let's be honest, a stranger turn up on their wedding day, the most important day of their, of their lives, and photographing them is very, very alien. So the sooner we can break down that barrier and get them relaxed and get them chilled out and get them at ease with me and what I'm going to do, the quicker we're going to get some really, really awesome wedding pictures. Um, so I'm, I'm just a, I'm a little rabbit in there, just chatting away, just take, take just think, make them think about anything apart from what we're doing and just get them relaxed. You get them relaxed, and I love the pictures. Brilliant. Um, oh, uh, I meant to ask this actually when you showed it. The um, the image you showed of the bride in like the arches, you know, the one that went sort of repetitive yes. symmetry. Um, somebody just asked, was that in, was that in Essex? Did you mention where it was? Uh, no, it's not. Sussex, uh, there, there is one very similar in Essex, uh, the Cape of Viaduct, but it's a not as in good condition uh, as the one that that one is. That's down in Balkham near um, Sussex. Oh, they did say Sussex. I've misread it. So there we go. Balkan is yeah, brilliant. Yeah, it's the, it's the Balkan Viaduct. It's very famous. It's a bit, actually, the architecture is fantastic. Yeah, uh, it's a fake of architecture itself, spanning the gorge. But it's, uh, yeah, you do get a bit of vertigo when you stand looking down the middle of it. That's uh, it's a bit of a head spinner. No, beautiful shot, mate. Beautiful. Love it. Okay, this is quite nice. I hung on to these. There's a group here. So you re you talked a couple of times tonight about um, the fact that you do uh, post-wedding shoots with the, with the bride and groom. Yes. Um, so um, how soon after uh, the, the wedding do you normally try to get them back? You know what? It, it depends. Uh, the, the, the couple that we took on, on the underground was about nearly a year afterwards because we were trying to get dates uh, confirmed and you know, obviously we book up and they had you know, obviously they, they work so it was it was um, that was quite hard. Uh, the, the one with the horse was a couple of weeks, the, the viaduct shot was a couple of months because the, the, the viaduct wedding, uh, the one with the album of the year, they got married at three o'clock in December so it was dark, pretty much dark when we came out so I knew I was up against it and I said to them when we finished the bride and groom shot, we can do so much more. Let's get dressed up again. We booked it in on the wedding day, so let's do it. Let's, let's spend some more time here and do some more shots. So we, we booked that in, and we did that about eight weeks after the wedding. Uh, brilliant. Uh, on the same note, then, would typically the bride and that have their makeup done again for these sort of shoots, or would you encourage them to? Uh, I, I would de definitely always advise makeup, um, but again, because it's a post-wedding shoot, I, I don't like to have things looking too similar to the wedding day, because it's, it is a different shoot at the end of the day. So we get things looking quite similar, but if the hair's different, makeup different, that's fine. It's not the same day. We need, you know, we need to differentiate between um, you know the, the, the wedding day and, um, and post-shoot. So yeah, I'm up for a, a subtle changes, definitely. Excellent. Uh, okay, got a few that I want to ask that are sort of more business related. The wedding are business related. Yeah. Uh, oh, well, uh, we'll kick off again. Staying on the the post wedding, do you normally include that as part of your wedding package, Scott, or is that an extra? Uh, it's an extra. Yeah, it's an extra. I used to um, like anything. You, uh, you you do the first couple for free, and then once you build a portfolio, um, as I mentioned, Alish, she booked me because she wanted a post wedding shoot. So uh, we do we do bill it in. Um, eventually, so we do charge extra for that after the wedding. 
So staying on the same note, do you, do you typically work in packages then? Are they paying for your time and an album, say, or is it all broken down? What, how, Everything's albums. Uh, I'm a great believer in the printed product, so you have to, if you come in with us, you have to have a book. Um, there's the option to buy the USB um, at the end of it, obviously, because people know to stand they want digital files, which is fine. They get uh, Facebook-friendly files um, as, if they book an album. If they want the high-res files, they, pay extra, they do pay extra. But generally, we do we work on like a, a coverage price of a full day um, from the bride prep until the first dance with an album. Um, and then that's priced accordingly. Then obviously any extras like parents' books, additional spreads. I shoot for the album. A lot of the stuff that you that you saw tonight were quite landscape and panoramic. So I work on, on selling spreads after the wedding day, so um, it, it works for me doing that way. Excellent. And like anything, I suppose you know you work yourself up to a, a price list anyway, and obviously you've got to value your work anyway, isn't it? So, yeah. uh, so obviously it sounds like you, you work in a very similar, similar situation as we do when we do the weddings. You know, we we pay for time, but we the package includes an album of a level. Uh, do you have different levels? Yeah. Do you have different packages? Yeah, I do. Yeah, so it depends on what size book you want to go for. We do. I mean, we we, we work with Loxley um, and Graphic Studio. They're the two suppliers that we use. Um, and we, well, I've got all the all the albums. Basically, I've just got. Uh, I was the first person to get the, the Graphic Studio Raw book, which I have here now. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I'm not too sure where to price it yet because I'm not too sure what they're going to charge me for it. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, we, we you know, it, it really depends on what the couple want and how happy they want to go. Brilliant. Um, oh, this came through a couple of times. We're getting only the last couple of questions now, Scott. Um, are you working by yourself on a day, or do you use assistance, or how many people are you working no, on? I have assistance on a day of second shooters. Uh, the wedding we shot before um, I went, went away last week, we actually had three of us. Um, logistically, it was an absolute nightmare. We were working in central London. I had to be in Upminster. The groom was in central London, and parking in London is an absolute nightmare. So I literally I covered the, uh, the bride prep. Uh, a good, very good friend of mine um, did the groom prep, and then my sec normal second shooter went straight to the church. So if we had any issues parking, then she was there to take over. Excuse me. But generally, it's myself and a second shooter. I like to focus on the bride and groom and, and, the, and the portraiture, whereas um, Karen, she goes around and gets the candid shots and the detail shots for me. So even though going back then to when you're doing uh, the bride and groom or the bridal portraiture and the groom portraiture just by yourself? Yes. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so, look. Any tips about getting working uh, 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 for getting awards? Well, what's what's the what's the approach to going for your awards um, and qualifications? Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've been quite lucky the last few years. Uh, just just think about your posing. Think about the light. Think about crafting. On the, the four things I go by: light, location, concept, and pose. And I think about that every time before I hit the shutter. Is the light right? Okay, the light's good. And that's that, that, that's. Think, let's look at the location. The location is not right, but the light's right. We kind of swap it around a little bit, and you craft the pose to suit the light, to suit the location. Then you'll then you'll work on the concept in post production. Um, I'm, again, I shoot quite clean. Uh, get watch out for highlights. Watch out for dark spots. Uh, make sure the images are, are, are clean, and y your eyes are going straight to the point that you want the judge to see. You're not distracted by random highlights in, on the wall or scuffs on the wallpaper, that type of thing. So, you know, it's, uh, I'm, you know, I'm happy to help anyone that wants to got any pictures that want to be, have a look at. I can help them point in the right direction. Brilliant. Um, are you clear with the bride and groom about how much time you want to get these quality images, to get these, these epic shots? Yes, um, I work on in 20 minute blocks. So basically they get married and I take them generally off for 20 minutes. Uh, just the bride and groom, um, and we work on everything quite, you know, quite rapidly uh, through that. And then I let them have 20 minutes to half an hour just to relax, have a drink, some canapes, and then we do uh, the group shots before dinner. Uh, obviously, now we're getting some light in the day, in the uh, in the evenings. I will then go out and do if they're up for it, another 20 minutes, half an hour photography after the speeches. Because generally, they've had a couple of glasses of wine, they're up for a bit more um, risky shots, and we can do that. But generally, they know they're going to go out 20 minutes, half an hour with, with me on the wedding day. Excellent. Um, how closely do you work with the venues? Do you think, is, is, is it good to get in with venues, Scott? Very, oh, very much so, more than ever. I mean, obviously, if you type in wedding photographers in Essex into Google, you get about 90,000 people pop up. Um, if you can get in with venues and have them promote you, it, it, you know, it's, it's 
it's uh, invaluable to me. I mean, I've got, I'm very lucky to be with some very, very top quality venues in Essex uh, that promote me, and I'm on their preferred supplier list, and I get emails all the time. Uh, but you have to look after it. I mean, at, at Christmas time, we, we, we send them gifts in uh, to say thank you for recommending us. So yeah, definitely, you get in at venues. It's a big, big plus point, absolutely. Brilliant. Um, just want to share this, uh, but want to talk about uh, before we before we finish. There's something obviously that we're going to announce that we want to talk about uh, that you've got coming up. But I just wanted to share this at the end. Uh, there was loads of great feedback, as I already said, but this is uh, one I kept on to. Fabulous set of images. Very, very inspired. I'm looking forward now to getting more experimental with my wedding photography. So awesome. your, your, work, your work, my friend, is done, <laughs> quite, quite frankly. <laughs> but before we do leave for the night, uh, I know that you've got, uh, we were talking off, off air earlier and we were hoping that we were going to be able to announce it tonight, but you've got something coming up with our good and close friend James Musselwhite, haven't you? Yeah, myself and James Musselwhite, again, I've known James for a couple of years. We met at SWPP a couple of years ago, um, and we are both going to be offering uh, two-day training um, seminars this year. We were just about to launch the website, uh, secretphotographers.com. Um, the idea is it's going to be myself and James and a secret photographer that we're going to be covering everything, marketing, social media, posing, lighting, um, across all aspects of photography. Obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm doing uh, covering the wedding side of it. James is covering the portrait side of it. Then we're going to get a third person on board. At the minute, we're working very closely with, with a very well-known female photographer who's hopefully going to be coming on board. Um, so we're going to be doing that at the, hopefully at the back end of this year, if not the very beginning of, of uh, 2018. Uh, we do have a website about to go live, and we have an email address that we are going to be that we can give out now if you want to uh, pre-register for discounts uh, and what we're going to be doing. So yeah, it's going to be big, exciting times ahead this year. Brilliant. Well, I've shared your links that they can interact with you because, of course, once it does go live, we were hoping that it was going to be live in time for tonight, but obviously if it's not. Yep. So it obviously, should be. It should be. <laughs> <laughs> well, ultimately, you know, like um, Scott on Facebook, I've sent out the links, obviously uh, follow him on Instagram because that's where you're going to get all updated on what's going on. But of course, yep. as soon as uh, Scott and James give us the nod, uh, we'll be sharing all of that information with them. Yeah, it, it, sh it should be live. So if you go to secretphotographers.com, there's a landing page and it will say register your interest. Or you can register your interest or email join at secretphotographers.com. Um, and then you'll be you'll be on a list, and then once we get the dates and locations confirmed, you'll be first on the list, and, and we'll we'll give you some offers your way to come and join us for a couple of days and, and have some fun. Absolutely brilliant, mate. Mate, from me to you, uh, loved tonight, loved the images. Um, so thank you, but endless thanks coming across the chat panel. So uh, really, really, really pleased that you gave. And looking forward to so having you on board as, as one of our masters, which is fantastic. Uh, yeah, I'm really, really honoured to have been asked. It's a pleasure to meet Mark. Uh, I mean, I obviously knew of Mark before, but to, to meet him at SWPP properly and have a good chat with him, I'm really happy to be on board. I'm loving the feedback. Any questions, guys, email me, Facebook me, get me on Instagram. I'm more than happy to, to you know, answer any more questions you might have. Brilliant, mate. Brilliant.